Hi, I'm Michael Sherrod. I'm a uh, equipment designer here at Davron Technology. This is DTI 1407. We call it the extruder downstream equipment. Reason being for that is the customer has an extruder melting down pellets of high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene and various materials. And then they basically squirt it through an extruder and it goes right onto our belt here. Some products get a film applied to it. There's a uh, six inch core up here. So a film gets applied lightly to the top of the material and that keeps the extrusion from scorching or blistering or things like that. Eventually it's gonna become foam, but at this point all it's doing is cross-linking that material and then it's foamed in a, uh, in a secondary process. Belt speeds are anywhere from two to 26 inches per minute. Uh, temperatures vary from 302 up to 410 degrees. The uh, oven itself is 20 feet long. There are five zones of heat, technically 10 zones. There's a zone top and bottom, four feet long, making up five zones total. Belt tension is maintained with an automatic tensioner up here. As the belt goes through the oven and heats up, uh, it expands. So we have a pneumatic tensioner that automatically takes up the uh, belt slack. One unique feature about this oven is typically our ovens are anywhere from, they can be office size to building size. This one, the inner chamber is pretty small. So actually the entire top half of this oven can be lifted away from the bottom half for easy cleaning and access for maintenance. After the extrusion is cross-length in the oven, there is a film removal roll. So basically, since that film is being applied on the entrance in the oven, on the exit in the oven, that film is then removed from the extrusion and that web goes up into a gantry and turns 90 degrees and there it's rolled back up and then that film's not good for anything after that. So it's basically it's rolled up and then thrown away. Um, also on the exit in the oven, we have an all air steering guide. It's just 100% air and it's steering this entire belt and keeping it centered in the oven and throughout the rest of the process. So after it's heated and the film is removed, the extrusion is cooled. There's a couple of air knives on the bottom that's cooling the product from below. And then there are two cooling boxes, one above and one below, that's also forcing air onto the product. So they typically want to get it down to between 110 and 175 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes for easier processing for uh, more downstream processes after cooling. So after the cooling conveyor, there is the conveyor drive. It's a uh, 36 inch diameter drum uh, lagged with rubber. So we're pulling the belt through the process. It's, uh, it's not a rigid belt, so it can't be pushed. So it's at the end of the process, so we're pulling the whole thing through. There's also a clutch on the conveyor drive. Reason for that is something happens or the product melts down, catches on fire, anything like that, and there's a power loss. That whole conveyor system can actually be operated manually with uh, basically it's a big wrench and all that product can be pulled out uh, to extinguish the fire. After that, there are two material guides on either side of the extrusion. So basically what we're doing is we're centering that product up before it gets uh, slit into multiple webs. There's a, a powered slitter that's pulling the product through as well as slitting it with circular knives. Um, the knives can be positioned anywhere across the width. You can just also remove or add knives so you can keep it as a single width or you can slit it into two or three different webs and you can also edge cut and remove your scrap material. Um, after that it will go into a shear and it's basically going to produce a uh, different size rectangle that basically look like plastic slabs after that. So after the product is slit and sheared there's a stacker table basically the continuous web behind the sheared products are basically just pushing those off the end of a table there's some sensors on the table and uh, that whole thing moves up and down and front to back and they can stack it into different stacking patterns. They could be one stack, two stacks, or three stacks. And depending on how many times it was slit, you might end up with a, a grid of nine or three or six or whatever is required. This conveyor oven is kind of one of the first processes of making industrial foam. This one is just cross-linking it, but eventually those foams can be used for automotive or aerospace applications or 
football helmets and other sports applications.